Welcome back to Benny's Customworks, proudly supported by Spares Box. Today's the day where we're going to start ripping into the Sigma. Uh, this episode we're going to be doing all sorts of suspension stuff, including building our own coilovers for the front. And to wrap it up, we're going to do the rear end, so we're going to put some lowered springs in and some new shocks. Um, yeah, this episode we're basically going to focus on lowering the car. In future episodes we'll be doing uh, more maintenance things like the ball joints and all sorts of other steering components and bits like that. So, let's jump into it. I've got most of the basic components here to do the front coilover kit. So I've got a weld on coilover sleeve kit, which comes with the top of the spring. So they're basically going to sit up here. We've got two different spring options. Uh, these are both actually left over from the Cresta. I don't know if either of them are going to be perfect, but they'll be good enough for mock up today. Got our new uh, front shock inserts, as well as our rear shocks. We've got two uh, boot and bump stop kits. And then obviously we've got our rear lowered springs. The other thing we do have is a second set of front Sigma struts. Uh, we picked these up from Alan who used to own our red car. Um, he's a bit of a legend. He actually gave me some paint to do a touch up on that as well. So it's pretty cool. Uh, but yeah, he's, he's got tons of Sigmas. So he let us go out there on the weekend and pull some parts off. We also got some other bits which we'll pop up in later episodes. Um, so yeah, thanks to Alan for all the bits. And yeah, the reason I've got this second set of struts is basically just so we can strip them apart and cut them up without modifying the original. So we'll still keep the original struts separate. Um, so we can revert back if we want to, not that we ever will, but it's, it's, it's just handy to have. Um, ironically, the shocks in this are actually in much better condition than the ones in the red car anyway. So we'll probably also keep those shock inserts. Um, it was actually quite a mission to find the front shock inserts. Most of the companies that list them have actually had them discontinued. Um, so yeah, Munro didn't carry them anymore and it took quite a lot of digging and looking around. So unfortunately, Sparesbox couldn't get those ones for us. But uh, yeah, we got these ones from a local parts shop um, after we spent hours digging through catalogs and found some uh, obscure part number that wasn't actually listed for a Sigma. But then yeah, after going back through, it turned out they were the right ones. Well. Hopefully they're the right ones, but we're all going to find out together if they are in fact correct. So we're going to strip our front struts down, we're going to pull the brakes off, and then we're going to pull our strut insert out. After we've got that all stripped, we're going to cut our spring perch off. Then depending on where our brake line mount is, we may have to remove that as well. And then we're going to basically mock it all up back together and install one of these struts into the car just to look at where everything's positioned. Um, the biggest thing, with these weld-on kits is actually working out where to weld this collar to. Um, I did the Cresta struts originally, so the struts that are still in that today are they're basically the same as these. They're just a replacement shock insert in the factory body with a weld-on coilover kit, and they have served us pretty well. Um, we do have some new coilovers actually coming for that that have just been made at the moment, so that's pretty cool as well. But um, yeah, these are a, a nice budget alternative. Um, to complicate things even further, the Sigma strut body is 51 millimetres, which doesn't seem to be a particularly common size. Um, we were lucky enough that um, John from V-Sport actually had these lying around. I'm not sure if they were from another project or something, but he never actually ended up using them. So he sold them to us pretty cheap as well. So that's pretty cool. So I'm hoping that we'll be able to get this whole front coil over together for about 500 bucks, um, which is pretty cheap compared to buying say like a BC coilover and then having to still weld it to your lower leg and then the strut top still need to be modified because no one does a camber plate style strut top um, to suit the Sigma that I'm aware of. Um, so yeah, for that reason, we're currently gonna reuse the standard style strut tops if and when we do find an alternative or we may even make something down the track. Um, yeah, we'll then convert to the camber tops. So yeah, basically we're gonna start by stripping the struts so we'll pull the brakes off and everything and then get into the welding and the fun times. Oh, made in Australia, they're going back in. <laughs> Actually nearly new, good spares. Which is funny because the car they came from looks horrid. So just got our shock inserts next to each other. The old one was a KYB actually that came out of it. It looked pretty good. So I'm going to keep that as a spare. Um, obviously the new ones we've got Gabriel's. Uh, they're slightly different where there's a little uh, protrusion off the original KYB. 
and the Gabriel doesn't have that, but the kit does come with uh, this little adapter which sits on the end and when you put them side by side, it basically makes them exactly the same overall length. So hopefully that uh, adapter collar goes straight into that leg and then we'll be good to go. So we'll give it a quick test fit before we go putting them back together. Um, but yeah, I'd say we're just gonna slip those little collars in and then it'll be sweet. Um, the other thing they do come with too is a couple of different body nuts. Um, by body nut, I mean the shock body. So these go in and then hold the strut insert into there. So they just got different uh, spacings on them for different setups. So that, uh, yeah, they should go in there pretty well though. I think they'll uh, fit straight in and we won't have any dramas. So it should be a pretty good setup. just cut the spring perch off, basically made a quick cut to remove the bulk of it. Uh, then made a really neat cut to uh, slice the very last piece off. Um, if you're looking really closely, you'll notice I didn't actually cut all the way through this though. I've uh, basically gone right through it, or oh, three quarters of the way through this material, and then actually just broken it off with a cold chisel. Um, these shock tubes are actually quite thin for what they are, so if you go too crazy with the angle grinder, you'll most likely cut through either the perch or the weld and then go all the way through into the shock tube. Um, I mean, you can weld it back up, but for the extra five minutes of care taken, it'll save you heaps of work and potentially keep the shock body stronger. So, or sorry, the, the shock tube stronger. So um, yeah, if you take your care or take time and a bit of care, you can definitely take these off pretty neatly. Um, all that's left to do now is clean that up and grind that weld down. So we're gonna take it over to the linear share and basically just buff that weld off and then give the whole, uh, that whole leg section a good clean off. We'll take all the paint off because our shock uh, or our spring perch will then slip over the tube and be welded to it. Um, I don't know where that's gonna end up yet. So what we're gonna do is I'm actually gonna drill and tap one uh, six mil hole M6 thread into this. And then we'll basically just use a bolt to quickly bolt it to the shock leg and then work out where we're gonna put it. Once we've finalised our position, I'll actually drill that out and then plug weld that hole to the shock body as well to give it a little bit of extra strength. But um, these, these tubes are actually quite good. They have a piece with no thread at the bottom which is designed to be welded to. So that gives us a little bit extra material to weld to without burning onto the thread. Um, previously, some of the other kits I've used are just a threaded sleeve. So they must just make five metres of threaded sleeve and cut it to length, whereas these are obviously machine and made to suit. So they're, they're quite a nice product. This is actually nicer than what I've used before. So we'll, uh, yeah, we'll clean up this and then we'll whack this sucker on after I move the Cresta. That cold start. 14 degree coolant temp. The brake caliper bracket bolts to the strut, but looking at the strut body, it's actually the same left to right. So, cool little way to keep your manufacturing costs down is to just make symmetrical products. So, and funnily enough, too, actually, it's got Mitsubishi stamped pretty clearly in the strut body. So, obviously, there was a lot of CKD parts that turned up for this car straight from Mitsubishi. Um, actually, we'll mention too. I've just trimmed the brake line bracket so that we can actually put the brake line in without having to bleed the brakes. So what we're gonna do is we'll basically just cut uh, the one on the car in the same way so we can get the line out. And that'll mean we don't have to bleed the brakes uh, because we are gonna do brake stuff later so I don't wanna have to redo stuff over and over.
got our strut pretty much mocked up now. I've just put the uh, brake disc and hub back on so we can actually mount a wheel to it. We've got our uh, top plate on, we've got our factory strut top on, got our new shock insert in, and we've obviously got our coil over leg and spring on. This actually isn't the spring I was originally going to use, but it's uh, probably close enough that it'll get us out of trouble. It's a five kilo spring, so it's fairly light. It could be, it could be a little bit lighter, but that's pretty light for a coilover spring uh, in general. So we'll uh, whack this together and, and see how it goes. So now we're gonna lift the car up and pull the stock strut out, bolt this in. Then we're gonna bolt a wheel on it and take some measurements off it and work out roughly where we wanna actually weld our sleeve to our strut. Um, I basically just mocked it up where the sleeve finishes where the original weld was on the uh, factory spring perch. But we'll uh, bolt it in and see where we end up. Um, obviously we haven't got our boot kit or our bump stop mounted in there yet We've just thrown it all together for mock-up because the whole thing's got to come apart again for welding and painting So once we work out where this strut's going to be We'll cut up our second strut and we're basically just going to make a pair so they're exactly the same um, Some kits you can actually shorten this strut body and put a shorter shock in it But for what we're going to do with it, I don't think that's going to be an issue um, We've still got plenty of shock travel So we'll uh, whack it together and it should be sweet That's how I shine. That's my feelings. Now that I've spent so long uh, TIG welding this on and I'm actually really happy with the welds, I'm going to change the course of this shock making, coilover making experience. I mentioned before about shortening the body and that we weren't going to need to do it. As it turns out, we actually are going to need to do it. We've, we basically pushed the shock to the end of its travel and the, and the wheel's still a fair way down. So uh, a few quick measurements and uh, a few Facebook messages to old Kev down at Barrel Brothers, the uh, Tilty Wheel King and he's given us some shocks that are gonna work and ironically they're super cheap SV21 Camry shock inserts. So I've uh, ordered some of those off the internet and hopefully they'll be here tomorrow. So that'll mean we can get back into it. Unfortunately, that's gonna mean I'm gonna cut through all of these welds that I've just put on and we're gonna basically shorten that shock length. And what I'm gonna do is actually use this coilover sleeve as the sleeve to shorten it. So basically we'll, we'll shorten it, I'll weld it, I'll grind the weld back, put the sleeve over it and then weld it both ends again to give it a bit more strength. Um, the only complication of that is I've got to be super careful welding this end. I may even get the, uh, the threads turned down off the end of this collar so that we've got a bit of material to weld to uh, because at the moment if I weld to that and it happens to burn across onto the thread, it'll basically mean we can't get any of our coilover adjustment nuts on and that's going to be a bad time. So I think I'll just uh, take it to, down to the local machine shop and just get them to knock 10 mil off that top thread and uh, it won't actually affect the adjustment or anything that we're gonna do anyway. So yeah, I think if we whip that off, we'll be able to weld to, to both ends of it, plus weld it nicely internally. So it'll still have plenty of strength. We won't have an issue with it, but unfortunately that brings us to the end of this part of the episode. So um, as builds sometimes happen, you come in with it with a, a pretty solid idea of what's gonna work. And then in, uh, in practicality, it doesn't work. So. Uh, yeah, even the best laid plans can come unstuck, so we'll uh, keep going tomorrow, but we thought we'd show you what we're doing and why. Um, it'll, it'll make a bit more sense once we cut it up and have those inserts, but I obviously can't just cut the end off it because the end is threaded for the locking nut. Some of these 
sleeves do actually have provision for that nut to be in the end of it, but this particular kit doesn't. And nothing I could find in 51 mil did come with that um, nut retaining thread in the, in the sleeve. So um, yeah, that's gonna put us back a couple of days, but we'll be sweet.